Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Norse Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. We're talking about Ezra. Okay. Not a lot of news lately. Well, when the actors aren't working and they're feuding with the studios, and it's a little hard to talk about stuff when we don't get to talk to the people who tell us the stuff. Makes sense. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Ezra. Like, what is his role in this show? He seems, right now he's kind of just the MacGuffin. Him and Thrawn are MacGuffins. In a manner of speaking, yeah. Yes. I want to see what they're going to do with these characters, though. I mean, they've already shown that Sabine seems to have an attachment from her staring at the old recording to her, like, she's living in Ezra's old home. Yeah, so that's kind of weird in a way. Yeah. She still has all of his helmet collection there, the one she painted for him. And she has to go and admire the picture she painted of him from ages ago. Is she learning lightsabers and stuff and training using his saber because she misses him? Yes. Do you think her entire plot is really driven by her desire to see Ezra again? Well, I almost think maybe part of the reason why they gave her the whole uh, training thing is to give her something more than, I just want to find Ezra. I almost wonder if that's why she stopped training. Because we know that the two had a spat, Ahsoka and Sabine, that for some reason they stopped hunting. Did they stop hunting because they couldn't find him? And she thought, why am I still here? Why am I with her? Why are we training if we can't find Ezra? Probably. Well, we don't, I mean... We don't know what the argument was. Yeah, that's the, the real problem is we missed a chapter, right? Yes. We've missed a big chunk in between at the end of Rebels and the start of this. We don't know what motivated Sabine to want to be training to be a Jedi. I don't think she ever has, like, the intent to be, like, a Jedi Jedi. Mm -hmm. Not if she's caring for Ezra this way, then it's full of attachments. Yeah, it, it's kind of ironic that the reason you want to become a Jedi is because you care about this person so much. It doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't quite jive no. with the, what we know about Jedi and the So it could very well be part of the reason they split in the first place is because Sabine was possibly frustrated at their lack of progress to finding Ezra. Yeah, I think Filoni found himself wondering, like, what do I do with Sabine in this series besides being, like, obsessed with Ezra? <laughs> well, I'm being serious, actually. Yeah. I, I think that's the whole idea. And it gives, it gives a, not to use the word, but it gives an attachment to Ahsoka, too. Mm -hmm. It makes sense that these two are together. Because she's training her as well. Right. Like the Padawan master relationship. They have the same goal. They want yeah. to find Ezra. Yeah, so if you step outside the story and wonder why are they doing this, it's probably just to give it a little more a little more meat on the bone mm -hmm. to the whole thing than just here's this girl and she wants to find a boy who is like a brother to her. Nah. I know that. I think absence made the heart grow fonder. I, I, I certainly think there is a potential future romantic relationship. And that that's Especially interesting too, because taller. Because assuming Ezra, goodness gracious, he's a little short. Come on, well, just because uh, Aren't we're you not a little short for a Jedi. I'm not, but Come have on. I mentioned I'm a six no, foot four? No, we don't need that's, to hear that's that a, here. That's a joke from me Monday, but no. But I think Sabine has certainly developed feelings mm -hmm. for Ezra, which could be interesting down the road if Ezra has held true to his Jedi ways. You also have this kind of maybe there's just no hot woman where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> Well... Sorry, this is what I'm here for. Is it, though? Sometimes. Yeah, this is what you're here for. Keeping me uh, keeping me on my toes, I think, is one of the reasons you're here. Mm -hmm. You almost wonder, do we have this kind of setup for this future awkward relationship between Ezra, who probably still, despite his message, you've always been a sister to me. I mean, that. what else is he going to say, right? I've always loved you. Well, at no. this point, he kind of knows the boundaries of where the relationship is, so why would he, yeah, in his goodbye make it message, awkward. make it awkward? Yeah. So I, I'm going to assume there are feelings on both sides and that when we find Ezra, there could be a, a future relationship. And then you have these two Jedi, quote-unquote, mm -hmm. which makes it interesting. But they're both full of attachments. Exactly. Then again, his mentor had plenty of attachments, too. Apparently, yeah. Kanan Jarrus, lover of Harris Syndulla, father of Jason. Jason Syndulla. Syndulla. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's quite the attachment there. Speaking of the Syndulas, I feel like that's another role that Ezra might be playing. Because we remember the really weird scene where Jason ran up with Chopper to see Hera. And he's like, Mom, I want to be a Jedi like Aunt Sabine. And she's like, okay. <laughs> it's kind of, it was very dismissive. It was that like pat on the head like, it was, of course you do, honey. Yeah, it was dismissing a child when they kind of tell you something they want. I hey, want to be an astronaut. Yeah, well, that's great. that's great. Yeah, someday you will be. I want to be the president. Okay, Jimmy. <laughs> it's it's the... I know you do. Yeah, it's that, like, you're going to change your mind tomorrow kind of thing. <laughs> but in this case, I think he knows who his father is. So it's a little more than that. Mm -hmm. 
So it, it does have to be an issue for Hera. And I don't, I actually think I don't like this scene because it just, for one, you don't really understand how is this Hera's child unless you've yeah. seen Rebels because it's like the green hair. We have no context and it's yeah. confusing because you're like, wouldn't her kid be a Twi'lek? league? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, well, yes and no. But then it's like, well, I want to be a Jedi too. And it, it comes off as this very, again, if you don't know the characters, like this, just kind of like, why did we even they, need this yeah, weird scene? Yeah, because they aren't referencing Kanan. He just says, I want to be a Jedi like Aunt Sabine. Yeah, like my father before me yeah, would have been a little more dramatic, but maybe used before. Yeah. Well, he could have been like, well, I want to be a Jedi like Aunt Sabine and, and Papa Kanan. Yeah, like my father. I mean, yeah. I no, guess you don't use it because it's just, it's kind of been done, but still. It's a, it's got to be a very weird scene if you don't know the show that or the characters. They're writing off Kanan, but he hasn't been mentioned once. He has not been. No, they still Kanan have plenty of time, but it does hurt a little bit that they haven't even mentioned him, it does. especially when they show off his kid. Yeah, because that was that felt like the moment to like give him a little context besides what's this green haired kid doing here. Well, you know what? They could have made the scene a lot more like emotionally impactful. But when he says, "I want to be a Jedi like Aunt A. Sabine," and she could have been like, and "Like your father," and maybe teared up and <laughs> got down on her knees and hugged him or something. That's a lot. And it would have given us some context because she did come out of a situation just then. She walked out of that room. Yeah. And she was probably a little emotionally compromised because she just kind of got a dressing down from some of the senators of, "Oh, you just want to find oh, Thrawn yeah, as an yeah. excuse you're to get resources to look for Ezra because yeah. you're obsessed." And she's like, "No, I'm not." <laughs> And you could see she was kind of riled she up. She was, yes. So walking out there and having a little emotional scene with her son, I think, would have been good. Yeah. Because she was already a little high strung from that situation. That was a stressful situation, trying to te- you know, tell them that this is a real threat, this is something that's coming. And they're like, yeah, sure it is. Yeah. And, and then she turns to her son, who's like, I'm going to be Jenna. And she goes, yeah, sure you are. <laughs> she did the same thing to, to him as the council sort of, of yes. the Senate did to her. It wasn't a great way to, quote unquote, introduce Jason Sandula because no. it's just... There he is. There's a kid running around wants to be a Jedi. Like, okay, I wanted to be a Jedi when he was Well, he was running around too. wanting to be a Jedi and Luke's opening a school and they haven't connected. Yeah. I mean, Ahsoka knows about Luke's school at this point. Ahsoka does, yeah. We don't know what Hera knows about Luke and well, schools yeah, but and stuff. <laughs> Hera, <laughs> she may have inquired, knows who... You know any good schools for Jedi? Well, I, I happen mean, to know one. Well, Ahsoka could probably tell if he has some sort of aptitude with the Force... Ahsoka probably well, knows who his father is. That's more blurry gray area now, aptitude with the Force and being able to tell. Get yeah, out the but old she might also know test. who his dad is. Someone's got an old midichlorian test in the closet. Mm. Just bust it out. And let's let's get an M count on this kid. What if Hera hasn't sought out any training for him because she wants Ezra to train him? What if she wants her son's teacher to be her... Man's. His, his, <laughs> his father's okay, last yes. student. Okay, Yes, I mean possibly. It's a beautiful, what if she doesn't want him to be? Thing. She might, yeah, she might be afraid of having him trained because she's worried she'll sacrifice himself like Kanan did. Yeah, that's what Jedi or do. Or like Ezra did. They both sacrificed themselves yeah. for other people. It's not easy to want your kid to do that. Yeah, too. And she's like, well, if I get my son to be a Jedi, it's fine if Auntie Sabine does it. She doesn't really mean it, but <laughs> she's not really totally on board with mm-hmm. all that stuff. So, so it's a weird situation. We started talking about Ezra, then we moved in talking about Hera. Now, now I don't know where we well, are. Well, I think you wanted to talk about Ezra and what is going to be his, his story. Role, his when, story. Well, his role in his story. I think he's been out there trapped this whole time with Thrawn. With Thrawn, probably buddies. not with Thrawn. I don't think. They're I think buddies. they're buddies. I think they're going to be buddies. That's the you twist. You think that they kind of had a survival type mode thing yes, where they had to work mind. together to survive? They had to. They had to do something I together. They had to survive that together. Ezra is kind of on the run from him because maybe Thrawn's trying to uh. hunt him down, thinking this is the kid who can take me home. Yeah, you got a point there. The Purgle, ride, he, the he Purgle brought master. the Purgle. Yeah. We know that the Purgle probably traveled back and forth to this galaxy, and this whole Seems time Ezra's like, I'm not helping him. Ezra yeah. might be working against him. He might be trying to out there, Thrawn's out there trying to lasso him some Purgle to <laughs> drag his ship home, and he, Ezra's like doing his whale calls, stay away from the Chimera. I have this weird image now, <laughs> Purgle, or Thrawn on his Star Destroyer, like, you know, with a lasso. That's and, the exact image I wanted you to yeah, have. Yeah, that's what I got. Yes. Ye Thrawn. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you might be right. You might be right. Maybe Ezra is on the run from him. Because Ezra doesn't want him to go back to that galaxy. So yeah. unless there was some sort of threat there that then, could unite them, then why didn't he just have the Purgle take them home? But why doesn't Ezra just go home then? Because maybe he's worried that if he goes home, Thrawn will be able to track him back. But the Purgle are probably coming and going. Like the eh, ones we saw in we the episode know. were all gray, which implies they uh, used up their gas. So Yeah, it means they need to get some more of that yeah, they need to get hyperspace that. fuel. <laughs> yeah, they need to go to that place in Rebels and fuel up. Well, there's other places too. Sure. 
But it, it seems to imply they came back from that galaxy. They mm-hmm. were pretty big ones, too. They were. They were like Ultra Pergo. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where King Pergo is. Maybe Ezra's just hanging out with King Pergo. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe they're not even in the same space you know, or place. Maybe. Maybe the Pergo need to check their passports to get back. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. There's a joke there that somebody will get. Yes. You do, but somebody else will get it, too. I hope. Yeah, but if Ezra's in this other galaxy, he doesn't want Thrawn to, to get back. And if he leaves, maybe he thinks that that'll leave Thrawn free reign to find a way so back. So is Ezra, like, sabotaging him, then? Possibly. Maybe if he's not there to stop Thrawn from maybe capturing Purgle or something, then Thrawn escapes, and that's the last thing he wants. Yeah, I guess. He might be there, like, counter... Balancing against Thrawn this whole time. We don't really know. We have but no idea. That's the most interesting part of the show. I just can't think and... that after everything Ezra went through with his battles against the dark side, that he'd join up with Thrawn, who were all like, oh, he's kind of a. a well, it's big not like deal. he'd join up with him just for the heck of it, but out of survival. Yeah, but if it's out of survival, then I feel like then he would just be like, well, Thrawn, I'm sorry, let's go back. Like, why would he team up with Thrawn? But you're all? assuming he, he can go back. We don't know why the Pergil took him there. He told him to. He's like, hey, Purgle, take us somewhere new. Well, and Purgle's like, well, I'll take you home then. Meet the folks. Huh, I don't, I it's don't think so. It's a Purgle party. Well, he, here's another problem. Like, Lothal wouldn't be a straight, direct path to the other galaxy, right? We don't know what kind of hyperspace lanes, though, the Purgle take. So you're saying they got multiple lanes to the other galaxy? Purgle might have their very own special way to get there. Well, We uh, don't know if this map... This map is how the... But the Jedi used Ancient to track Dathomir their... Ancient would have gotten there. The Jedi used to track their path. Do you think, like, the Purgil just go, like, galaxy to gather all over the universe, essentially? They could they're probably like be... The, they're like the glue of the entire universe that they're, they're going... Everywhere. Because, you know, what we heard Huyang say is that they track their paths in between galaxies. Like, plural. Did he mm-hmm. mean, like, multiple galaxies or just this one? Are they literally going all over the place? There's probably a Purgil in our galaxy right now. If, if, yeah, if Star Wars is truly in our galaxy, which <laughs> shit, you know, it is ish. Yeah, they're probably floating around right now. Right now. Yep. Purgle everywhere. Purgle. We got a space whale in orbit right now. <laughs> wow, it's almost like Star Trek. Don't. They, they had whales in know. space. <laughs> no, they didn't have whales in space. Yeah, they, they took them time to travel. Yeah, but they had to take one into space. Briefly? Because they had See, to go around the sun. Maybe. To time maybe travel. Maybe they or, invented the Purgle. The Purgle eventually escaped from their holds while traveling. And we're like, now we travel. So you've just made a link between Star Wars and Star Trek. That's what I do. It's about the whales. It's again, this is what I'm here for. The weird alien probe in Star Trek Four was the Pergil Hunter. You want to know what happened to our Earth's Pergils? Hmm. Yep. We've gotten off topic, haven't we? Uh, I blame you. Yeah, I'll take the blame for that one. Thank you. But no, I, I, think, I think you might be on the right track. I think Ezra is probably trying to thwart Thrawn. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't be shocked if they're buddies. No, they, they can't be. He's done too much wrong for Ezra to ever forgive him. Well, it's not about forgiveness. It's about survival. Yeah, he can maybe, survive without him. He's got maybe the Maybe Thrawn has been like, you know, this is why I was doing it. There's this thing called the Grisk. There's these species called the Grisk. Oh, and that's why you killed and, my master? Eh, you know, hmm. yeah, that's a lot to get over. <laughs> yeah, he tried to literally bring his master back from the dead. So I don't think he's going to... tried to bring his master back from Ezra. the dead? He, was, he wanted to save him. Oh, yeah, but you're, I'm talking about Thrawn. I know, but I'm like, so why would he forgive Thrawn? If Ezra cared cared so much about about Kanan, and Thrawn is the reason that Kanan is dead. Learn to let go of everything you're afraid to lose. So it's not that good of a Jedi. He didn't finish his training. <laughs> They're like guidelines, like the pirates' code. Yeah, okay. a little bit more. Than, I, I got gotcha. you. Maybe you I should gotcha. wrap this up because now we're yep. not go, we're going. Now it's your turn to get us places. off the track. All right. Well, that's going to be all we got for you this time. So now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think about anything we uh, rambled about here. You rambled. And let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.